Hello friends, uh, presenting the next syndrome of the week. So till now we were dealing with inherited pancytopenia in the past weeks. So since we are done with it, thought we'll take up the next topic and this topic will be about primary amenorrhea and uh, disorders of sexual development. So we have certain very confusing syndromes over here and let's see how to approach each of those syndromes in the following weeks. So presenting today's case scenario, this is about a 17 year old girl who's presented with complaints of not having achieved her menarche. So this is a case of primary amenorrhea. Primary amenorrhea is present. So there are no other complaints as such as of now. Further on examination, she had a lean and tall body habitus. So normal female habitus was present. Normal female habitus was present. Then they be on looking for secondary sexual characteristics. Her axillary and pubic hair development was tanner stage 2. That means it was scant. It was scanty. Next, looking further at the breast development, it was tanner stage 4. So this was good. So breast development was normal. Breast development was normal in our case. Next, length of the vagina was around 4 cm. And this ended in a blind pouch. Cervix <coughs> could not be observed on examination. Okay. Next, we went further and did the USG abdomen to this patient. So this revealed absence of ovaries, tubes, and uterus. So internal genitalia, internal genitalia were absent. Next, looking at the external genitalia, vagina ended in a blind pouch, cervix was absent, labia major and clitoris were hypoplastic in this patient. Okay, next on USG, it also showed two ovoid mosses near the internal inguinal ring, indicating these were nothing but intra-abdominal testis. Intra-abdominal testis was present in this case. So, going by the history, we have a case of primary amenorrhea, which the kid is practically a female with scanty hair and breast development normal. So, secondary sexual characteristics are okay. Internal genitalia are absent, but external genitalia is female like, is female like. But on USG examination, there are intra abdominal testis is also present. So, what do we do in such a case? After doing USG, since secondary sexual characteristics are present, further we go ahead and do a hormonal essay. So, hormonal essay indicates testosterone is elevated, FSH is normal, and luteinizing hormone is again elevated. So, when we look at Cases of primary amenorrhea. Primary, so, so firstly, how do we divide this? How do we divide this for to get the differential diagnosis? One is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Second is hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. And third is normogonadotropic normogonadism. So under the first category, we can think that the pathology is at the level of hypothalamus or pituitary, which is not secreting the hormones. Okay. So that's why something like Kalman syndrome or a pituitary tumor will come under this category. Under the second category, the hypothalamus and pituitary is secreting the hormones, but at the level of ovary or testis, there is some amount of resistance. So the FSH and LH will be elevated. The testosterone or the estrogen secretion might be abnormal in these conditions. Okay. Next is normal gonadotropic normogonadism, wherein even the ovaries and the testicles are functioning fine, but there is some other abnormality. So the first and the last one we will deal in the further sessions. Since today we have a case of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, let's see how to approach this. Next, we'll look at secondary sexual characteristics. So in our case, it was present, but if it is absent, then we think of premature ovarian failure, resistant ovarian syndrome, gonadal dysgenesis, gonadal agenesis, and Turner syndrome. Okay. But if it is present, then we go ahead and do USG. On doing USG, we look for internal genitalia. If it is present, well and good. If it is absent, then we'll go ahead and do hormonal essay and we'll do confirm the diagnosis by doing a karyotype. So in our case, karyotype was 46XY, indicating that genotype was a male, but the phenotype is female okay so in that condition we'll have to think of androgen insensitivity syndrome androgen insensitivity syndrome but a very close differential diagnosis is normogonadotropic normogonadism with karyotype 46 xx mrkh mrkh in mrkh as well there will be mullerian agenesis 
over there also internal exam internal genitalia will be absent with normal secondary sexual characteristics so a very close differential diagnosis will be this but this as well we can rule out by doing hormonal assay and karyotype hormonal assay will show normal gonadotropic normal gonadism karyotype will show genotype as also as female okay next if it is uterus is present even the internal genital layer are normal then it, either it can be cryptomenorrhea this again there will be uterus and uh, outflow tract obstruction oh, so over here this will come under normal gonadotropic normal gonadism or if this is not the condition usg abdomen pelvis is normal then again we do hormonal assay if we find hypergonadotropic hypogonadism primary ovarian failure turner syndrome raised and ovary all these things can be the cause so coming to our case for the day androgen insensitivity syndrome it can be either complete insensitivity or partial okay so as we see in our case testosterone is elevated testosterone is elevated but still <coughs> the other other the functions that the testosterone are supposed to do is not happening that means there is some resistance so what is this resistance there is resistance in androgen receptor okay so that's why testosterone is not able to act that's why we come to a diagnosis of this it can be complete and partial if it is partial what happens is phenotypic <coughs> is male with ambiguous genitalia so since there is partial deficiency some amount of testosterone still acts because androgen receptor is partially functional so in that case we won't accept uh, we can't accept a um, phenotypically female okay but in our case it was a pakka female so 100% female so we come to a diagnosis feminization syndrome okay so it's a most common cause of male pseudo hermaphroditism so what is male pseudo hermaphroditism phenotypically a female but genotypic is a male so and it's also most common cause of male disorder of sexual development okay so etiopathogenesis is x linked recessive inheritance there is x linked recessive inheritance okay so what happens there is androgen gene androgen receptor gene mutation and where is this located this is located on chromosome xq11 and 12 so we can ex this is x linked inheritance recessive inheritance so androgen receptor gene is mutated so now what we ex we can accept the wolfian duct structures wolfian duct structures they they are developed in response to dehydrotestosterone so testosterone gets converted to dehydrotestosterone in the presence of 5 alpha reductase so wolfian duct structures further develop but testosterone but the dht to act there is resistance androgen receptor gene mutation is present so the male structures do not develop male structures do not develop male external and internal genitalia do not develop so in the absence of dehydrotestosterone in the absence of dehydrotestosterone activity external genitalia it becomes female like because what happens one is wolfian duct structures don't develop so the internal genitalia don't develop male internal genitalia will not develop now comes the external genitalia external genitalia in the absence of dehydrotestosterone activity that as well becomes female like okay so what are the clinical features we accept we can ex <coughs> genotypic will be male but phenotypic will be female correct no so external genitalia will be female like again why we saw dehydrotestosterone will not act so what do the external genitalia do they go ahead and become female like vagina ends in a blind pit and clitoris and labia majora will be hypoplastic what will happen to internal genitalia internal genitalia uterus and tubes are absent uterus and tubes are absent because this doesn't happen because there is enough amount of anti-mullerian hormone substance secreted so by the y x y chromosome y chromosome secretes this in the presence of this <coughs> so the um, female internal genitalia do not develop okay next testis will be present but it is intraabdominal again for the testis to descend again hormones are necessary that are not acting properly so in puberty what do we expect except female habitus will be there 
breast development will be normal scanty pubic and axillary hair and primary amenorrhea so this is what we can expect next what are the differential diagnosis one is partial androgen insensitivity syndrome and similar phenotypes and similar phenotypes because there are similar phenotypes something like sphere syndrome can come over here sphere syndrome can come gonadal agenesis can come so lydic cell hypoplasia can come so all those things come, can come over here and other hypogonadotropic hypogonadism which we saw in the flow chart as to how to approach primary amenorrhea and mrkh syndrome is a very close differential diagnosis that we can consider next how do we diagnose this case one is usg that will show absent female internal genitalia and intra abdominal testis can be found next is hormonal assay testis can secrete testosterone so the testosterone secreted will not go act in the periphery so that is the problem so testosterone will increase luteinizing hormone increases but fsh can remain normal or might increase it remains normal because inhibin that is secreted gives negative feedback to fsh so since inhibin activity is normal fsh we can accept expect it to be normal okay next is karyotype this is the best this will give 46 xy so genotype will be a male next is the complication the testis can undergo malignancy so this has to be removed so what is the treatment one is gonadectomy next is vaginoplasty for a normal sexual life if they want to have baby adoption is the only way and genetic counseling okay genetic counseling has to be done for the parents okay so that's it in the next week we'll deal with other confusing syndromes of the disorders of sexual development and primary amenorrhea so hope it was useful thank you guys bye bye